Dairy farming is one of the most difficult things you can do in agriculture in South Africa. I've got a farmer here, Nick Stubbs, from Stubbs Farming in the Cockcliffe region. He's going to be telling me about what it's like being a dairy farmer, some of the challenges, and what are the sort of the day-to-day -day operations that they run here. I'm Pierre Monet, and welcome to Farm Space. Nick, welcome to Farm Space. Thanks, Pierre. So, we've had a little walk around, and we've got a truly beautiful farm here. Thank you. We've got about 10,000 uh, dairy cattle here. <laughs> tell us, where did it start, and tell us about Stubbs Farming. Where did you guys come from? Um, okay, so it started about... 36, 37 years ago, uh, when my dad moved down here to the Karkloof, he used to farm in Moor River, and uh, yeah, he, he came down here as a dairy farmer and um, with intention to grow his dairy business, um, and uh, yeah, I've been involved in the, in the business for about, well, my whole life, I grew up here, and um, yeah, I spent my whole life cruising around the farm, mm. um, and then more recently became a partner in the business in the last sort of five, six years and um, took over the management of the business in the last four years. So yeah, this is sort of the center of our operation. We've got another farm up in Nottingham Road, but this is kind of where everything happens. Um, we run the business from here and um, yeah, this is our home base. So there's an old saying that no one wants to be a dairy farmer just because you know, you're waking up before the crack of dawn. So just ch chat to us about the, the, your day-to-day -day, day -day routines here um, on the farm and what, what what a dairy farmer entails. Yeah, so one of our managers uh, has, a, has a saying, he thinks that it, uh, it takes a special kind of stupid to be a dairy farmer. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope I don't offend anyone saying that. <laughs> but um, yeah, we are, we are a unique breed. Um, so our day starts here at about four o'clock in the morning. Um, it starts at about half past two for our herdsmen. They bring the cows in. Um, the cows will start walking onto the table at about quarter past half past four. Um, we generally finish milking by about half past seven, eight o'clock, and um, and then the cows go to the pasture and they recover for about well until about twelve o'clock, and then they come back in for afternoon milking, which is at um, half past two in the afternoon. We generally finish up by about half past five, six. Um, the outside operation started about seven and uh, finish at five, so the guys spend the whole day doing different tractor work and various uh, different operations around the farm to keep the place going. So chat to us about your output. How many, how many liters of milk are you guys um, getting out the farm each day? So we, we milk um, purebred Holstein. So we're looking for about an 8,000 liter lactation. That's an mm -hmm. annual lactation. So it works out to about 23 liters per cow per day. Mm -hmm. um, we produce in our business 18 and a half million liters annually. Um, yeah, and these are, these are some girls that have just carved down. So they'll <laughs> they'll start off and uh, they'll work themselves up to about a 35 liter peak uh, in about 60 days um, and when we when they finish their lactation they dry off at about 15 to 20 liters so yeah we 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 are high input high output system um, we don't want to push them too hard we try and use the cheapest feeds that we can so predominantly perennial ryegrass supplement them with a bit of silage and a bit of uh, grain bought in um, feeds from uh, here in the dairy um, but those are the expensive ones you try not to use too much of it um, yeah let's go have a look and see some of the, um, the cattle in the field cool um, so while we're walking you can just chat to us about a bit about cattle management and how you guys sort of manage that on the farm so we we embrace technology in this uh, operation so each cow is individually fed and monitored in the parlor, so we've, we track their production twice a day. They'll come out of here, they walk over that scale, so they get weighed twice a day as well. They get fed individually per, per cow uh, according to their weight, stage of lactation, number of liters that they're producing. Um, and then that scale make, keeps track of their condition. We want to keep them um, on a rising plane of nutrition. Um, and then we've got sort gates there as well, which are all controlled by computer, so the manager He'll come in, he'll, he's got his routine, cow, well, routine jobs for each day. Um, so the computer's set up to draft cows off um, for each of those different uh, jobs that needs to be performed on them, um, as well as sorting them for like vet visits and um, keeping the groups that we run separate um, through the use of the sort gate. So that thing and the computer makes our lives uh, a hell of a lot easier. You know, if we, we're milking 1,200 cows here a day and uh, to try and do that by hand, mm. you know, sorting, drafting off by hand would be a nightmare. So, mm. you know, that really saves our lives. Cool, let's go have a walk over there. All of our feeds are stored here in these silos. Yeah. 
This tractor's busy loading up with uh, an 18% calf meal. He's going to go and feed a whole of the younger calves. Um, so animals between two and eight months old will be fed what he's, uh, what he's loading here. We feed them three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Just makes it easier from a management point of view. Uh, don't have to do it every single day and then that frees up the tractor to do other jobs. Let's head on up to the car pens. So Nick, just chat to us about the, the operation in the sense that obviously farming is a, it's forever changing and it's adapting each day. How are you guys here at Stubbs Farming keeping ahead of that, that, that curve and you know, keep changing your, not changing operations day to day, but you know, trying to try new things to make sure at the end of the day your farm is more productive? Yeah, so I think that's a, a challenge for me specifically in that as a youngster coming into a, an established um, business, you know, we all want to put our stamp on, on the, or put our mark on the, on mm. the business and, um, and try and do something that's unique. And, uh, you, you got to be careful that you don't you don't make unnecessary changes um, and you know that 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 uh, age-old saying that says if it ain't broke don't fix it yes um, you know it's a fine balance between doing that um, and you know remaining relevant in a in a constantly evolving industry mm. um, so you know we we like using technology it's a it's a fine line between um, spending money on unnecessary technology and uh, and then and then being left behind so you know, that's something that I've got to manage. Mm. And chat to us about some of the genetics behind your, your, your cattle. <coughs> what's, your, what's your breeding program like? So we recently embarked on a new breeding program. Um, we've always had bigger cows, so bigger black and white cows, the Holsteins. More recently, sort of in the last 10 years, we've been trying to ensure that we don't breed a cow that's too big, that has too high a demand, um, something that can survive in a, in a pretty demanding system. So we're looking for about a 550 kg cow um, who can produce lots of milk uh, with, with good um, milk solids behind it. Um, more recently, we, we've started uh, using genomic technology, so we genomically test um, our, our female cows, uh, while our younger animals, um, and we breed only the best uh, genetics with sex semen. Mm -hmm. So about 15% of our herd is, is bred with sex semen, so we, there's about a 95% chance that we'll get a, 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 a female um, calf out of that. And then the rest of the, um, the cows are bred with uh, black Angus semen. So we then have the option to either raise that that, um, that crossbred calf, that beef cross calf, um, and sell it as a wiener, or we sell it as a week old animal to one of the feedlots. Perfect, and what do we have going over here? So these are calf pens. We, we have a fairly unique uh, calf rearing system um, that, that my, my dad developed um, over the years. Um, so what we do is we keep the calves in these indiv individual crates. It's easy to manage their hygiene. One person can come and manage this whole facility of 150 calves. Um, easy to keep clean, nice ventilation, the calves stay dry, um, and there's, there's no um, cross-contamination of disease. Um, they get fed once a day. We feed them three liters of milk uh, in the morning, and then we try and encourage them to, uh, to eat grains as soon as possible because that's going to be um, the, the predominant uh, ingredient in their diets um, over the next sort of 12 months. Um, so the sooner they can adapt to it, the better. And a farm on this, this scale, um, there's a lot of moving parts happening on, on one, any given day. So tell us about some of the, the toys that you guys have got, got here and, and why, are you, why are you using them? So, okay, so we used to rely quite heavily on contractors. Um, we now, we've brought a whole lot of activities in-house. Um, so we've got, in our business, we've got a fleet of nine Massey Fergusons. Um, we've recently purchased a whole lot of Massey Ferguson um, haymaking equipment. Uh, so we've got, um, we've got the baler, we've got the tedder, the rake, the mower. Let's have a walk and um, go look at them as well. We'll go and have a look there. We've, uh, we also recently purchased a self-propelled sprayer. So we do all of our own spraying as well as a bit of contract spraying mm -hmm. um, for other growers in the, in the area. Mm -hmm. um, we, we use uh, s s all of our fertilizer spreaders, lime spreaders um, are uh, variable rate equipped, so all precision equipment. Um, so all of our fert spreading is done uh, on a grid, based off a grid sample on a precision map, um, or it just uh, on our sort of um, maintenance fertilizing. Uh, it'll the guys. It, it's not a variable rate, but the v rate varies as the guys increase or decrease their speed. Um, 
So we try and we try and keep that as precise as possible. Um, we do all our own maize planting, so we've equipped a maize planter with um, precision equipment. So um, precision equipment on the seed and on the fruit. So we've got variable rate on the fruit and the seed. Um, and that's been uh, that's been a pretty cool change um, that we made in the last couple of years. Quad bikes, motor bikes, you know, all of our herdsmen get around on on two wheelers, um, and then uh, the fleet of Hiluxes that goes along along with it as well. So just chat us about why Massey. What made you make that change and go red? <laughs> <laughs> so my 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 blood was a different colour for. For, uh, for a long time and um, I think I shocked a lot of people when I changed to red yeah but um, I think it's it just came down to finding a tractor that was that uh, met our requirements um, we didn't feel the need to we didn't want to be paying for something that we weren't going to make use of mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know the global series tractors um, fitted right in with what what we required and they, they're affordable and they they um, they're effective mm. um, then we've got a couple of the, the Bouvet tractors um, we do all of our big work with those. So the maize planting, um, pulling the bigger, heavier trailers, land prep. Um, we don't do too much of that because we predominantly a no-till um, operation. But uh, they, they fulfill that sort of precision um, uh, requirement, you know, more comfortable cab, um, bigger, more capable tractor. So when you're spending long hours planting maize, doing 14, 16 hour shifts, that's the tractor that you want to be in. So how does the Massey Ferguson brand fit into your, your farm so well? What, what makes it work? Well, it's, it's, uh, we, we're very much productivity focused. So the tractor's got to work all the time. So mm -hmm. it can't break down um, and it's got to last. You know, we, we put a lot of hours on our tractors and we put nearly 3,000 hours a year on our tractors. Um, they're working non-stop and the tractor's got to perform. It's got to, it's got to run, can't break down, and at, at the end of three years, once you finish paying for it, it's got to be able to, it's got to maintain its value and be uh, sellable. So, mm. and we, we've, we've seen that that's, uh, that is the case. And have you found having new investment in all these masses have made a difference here? Yeah, I think it has, eh? We've, uh, we, we've ended up with more money in the bank. When we bought those tractors, it, uh, it cost us a whole lot less to, to refleet our, our, our fleet. And, um, yeah, at the end of the day, as a businessman, you've got to look at making sure that you you sustainable by by, by making um, decent profits and margins. And and I think that's been the biggest game changer. You know, cheaper parts, cheaper tractors that that last, um, as well as any other tractors. Nick, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Pierre. Andrew, welcome to Farm Space. Thank you very much. So we just had a quick chat to, to Nick and he took us through his operation here and he, he spoke to us a bit about the Massey Ferguson. So who are you, what do you do and what's your relationship with Nick and the Stubbs Farming? So I'm Andrew Nicholson, I run the Massey Ferguson dealership in Peter Maritzburg um, by the name of FMS. Uh, we supply the full range of Massey Ferguson equipment um, like this guy behind us, specially suited to the to the dairy farmers. And so, so chat to us about the relationship you have with the Stubbs family and why is it so important that you have that, that personal yeah. connection uh, with the farmers when they, when they come for you for any, any needs? So I've had a long relationship with the Stubbs family. I actually live uh, not very far from here. Um, so, you know, doing business with a friend, doing business with a neighbor um, is sometimes challenging. I don't find it challenging at all. In fact, we've got an amazing relationship. Um, concentrating on, on what has to be done and that, that talks around total cost of ownership, um, it talks around the productivity, these machines work um, seven days a week, the cows got to be milked seven days a week, so we keep them running, there are no spare f machines on these farms and we have to provide that service to make sure that these machines run and run eff effectively at the right cost um, over their life um, and I think as long as one makes that work, the relationship with Nick will be a, will be a good one. So Andrew, how do we get a hold of you guys? So you can get a hold of us um, either through our website um, www.fms.org.za um, or on the Maritzburg phone number 033-342-2472. Andrew, thank you so much. Pleasure, cheers. So there you have it. That's everything here from Stubbs Farming in Karkloof. If you guys have any questions about the Massey Ferguson that they're running here, be sure to contact Andrew and they'll be in touch. Until next time, cheers.